Hello, animals. Let's play everyone's favorite game and a beloved pastime of this channel, which is called Look at a Difficult Groove and See What Makes It Difficult. The groove in question today is this mind-boggling thing from the start of Animals as Leaders, Arithmophobia. The song starts with a straightforward 4-4 synth and guitar melody. And then a laser-precise chugging, thumping guitar thing comes in. For years listening to this without like actually learning to play it, I could never quite figure out how these two were related. When I finally got down to the analysis for this video, I figured out both what the relation is, which is cool and helpful if you're going to really learn to play this, and why this relation is so hard to hear, which is even cooler for a nerd like me. This is a cool example of that thing I call rhythmic parallax, where it's pretty likely that this rhythm is fundamentally different in the ears of the band than it is to casual listeners. I'll give away the right answer first, or at least the way of thinking about this that you get if you slow it down, play it with a metronome, transcribe it, etc. Basically, everything is on a 16th note grid, and the guitar attacks follow this scheme. We get four times through this 13-16 figure that goes 5 plus 4 plus 4, then a long string of 4s interspersed with either 1 or 2 3s without a single overarching pattern to that stuff. Here's that very slow. A couple things are already pretty tricky. If we listen to the pulse of the synth thing in the beginning, it's probably most likely that we'll hear a tempo around 75 BPM, which would be like this. But if we take this as the tempo, we need to hear 30 second notes in order to grab the guitar riff. We're already kind of set up to fail because 30 second note grooves, even at slow tempos, are really rare and really tricky because you're, you're feeling eight subdivisions per B, which is a lot of subdivisions to keep track of and to feel. It's much easier to adjust to hear a tempo twice as fast and think 16th notes. <laughs> The other thing is that almost all of the guitar attacks come on either the E or the uh of the B, as in one E and a two E and a. That is the second or fourth sixteenth note, which are like super duper off beats. Uh, so if you think about beats two and four as off beats, and then eighth notes, the the and as another layer of off beats, these are yet another layer of off beat. Uh, so they're off beats of the eighth notes, off beats. When you have more attacks landing on these off beats of off beats of off beats than on stronger beats, it gets really easy to lose that bigger beat. Also, the drums aren't helping us keep the beat here. Matt isn't like pounding out quarter notes or half notes or anything for us. But if you slow it down enough, uh, you can kind of figure out these, these tricky things. They're, they're tricky, but they're straightforward types of difficulties. Here it is slow again. is though that as we approach the tempo of the recording, these 16th notes get really fast. Fast enough that it gets less and less likely that most people will be able to take them into account in their hearing. This is kind of the fundamental perceptual fact that a lot of rhythmic parallax is built on. So if you're taking notes, make sure you're clear on that point. When things get fast, the underlying unifying pulse becomes invisible, and all we have to base our rhythmic interpretation and movement on is the slower pattern that's built on these pulses. From there, our ear will tend to simplify, and the, the threshold for this is around 100 milliseconds per useful subdivision, so a tenth of a second, which is right about where these 16th notes are here. So 
So here, instead of hearing this repeating thing as 5 plus 4 plus 4, it gets easier to hear it as just three almost even beats. That would sound something like this. The second portion of the pattern, that string of 4s and 3s, is also tricky. Hearing the difference in duration between 4 and 3 16th notes at 150 BPM is really hard, so I think I tend to hear this as a kind of wonky beat at the average rate of those guitar attacks. If you average all of the 4s and 3s in this passage, you get roughly 3.5, which means hearing a beat that sounds something like this. These are a little wonky, and listening in isolation makes it a little clearer that these interpretations are kind of weird. But I would definitely say that these ways of hearing the beat are easier and come more naturally than trying to keep the actual quarter note beat going through this. I mean, you can just listen to the synth thing and tune out the guitars, but that's kind of a different thing. I'm talking about hearing the guitar attacks in relation to that, that uh, synth beat. Here are the two options back to back. First, the option where you create a new like average tempo to fit these attack strings. <laughs> Here's the way that keeps the quarter note beat 16th note grid, which feels a lot less intuitive, I think. metal music theory, in the actual recording, the synth pattern keeps going and reinforces that quarter note beat. Shouldn't that make it easier to hear the actual beat? Well, handsome young man, you'd think so. But I don't find that to be the case. Instead, this continued synth pattern just makes things more confusing, in my opinion. It feels like an unrelated layer at an unrelated tempo. To put it into numbers, the tempo of the synth thing is like 150 BPM while the simplest way of hearing tempo in the guitar attack strings is at around 138 BPM, then around 171 BPM. The effect, if you're not tracking the 16th notes but still aware of both the synth layer and the guitar attack layer, is one of polytempo, which is this thing where you have two or more unrelated pulse streams happening at once. And when I say unrelated, I mean not simply related. Not, they're not integer multiples of each other, the rates. Here's an outline of the section just in terms of these metronome things. It's a kind of abstract interpretation of this idea. And then here it is with the, the music also. Finally, here it is with the recording, which makes everything even more chaotic and frantic and disorienting sounding.
Obviously, Animals as Leaders is a virtuosic band, and Tosin, Javier, and Matt all do things with their instruments that are truly amazing feats of instrumental athleticism. But what I find almost even more impressive is the conceptual virtuosity of sections like these, which in this case bends not just everyone's fingers, but also all of our minds. Stay in school, everyone, and tell your family I said hi. See ya.